Hello and welcome to one more episode of the FTM printed SLA printer. This time we have a look on the HDMI display, which type exactly do you need, what components come with it and how it needs to be prepared to get used with an SLA printer. As you can see I received a nice little box directly out of China. It contains a 5.5 inch 2K LCD module together with an HDMI to MIBI drive board. I also ordered an optional additional glass protector which is from my point of view absolutely necessary to protect your HDMI display from scratches or from cracks and also from the resin. The resolution of the display is 2560 by 1440 and you can find them uh, often advertised as replacement part for Van Hu Duplicator 7 printers. Besides of the glass protector the box contains uh, the MIBI driver board and tiny adapter board to interconnect the flat ribbon cables of the different sizes and the HDMI display itself. To make an LCD display usable for any SLA printer this requires to get rid of the backlight of the display. And this is a process that is irreversible and makes the display unusable for any other purpose. And most important this will definitely invalidate any warranty claims that you might have had otherwise against your supplier or the manufacturer. So if you decide to follow these instructions and this guideline be aware that this is your own decision and you do it on your own risk. And due to the invalidation of your warranty claims, it is most important to clarify that the LCD display that you received was in a good condition and working condition at the point when you received it. And so we make a test before we do any modification. Just to give you some impression how thin and fragile those displays are, we make some measurement. And as we can easily see, it's about 1.4 mm thick and this is while it has still his backlight on. Needless to say that without backlight it's even thinner and even more fragile and we need to take a lot of care not to mess it up. So let's start with interconnecting the HDMI MIBI driver board over the flat grip and cable with the cable adapter board. And as you can see, both boards have a connector which has approximately the width of the flat ribbon cable and both connectors have a kind of lip that can be folded up and down. And the way those connectors work is that you pull up the lip, push in the flat ribbon cable in the orientation that the plank side with the uh, unisolated wires down and push down the lip again. The HDMI display together with its driver board is powered by 5V DC which is provided via a micro USB connector. For this short test any active USB host port will be fine as a power source. The tiny black ribbon cable that is directly attached to the LCD display need to get interconnected with the adapter board. This rectangular connector at the end of the flat ribbon cable need to get carefully aligned with the corresponding rectangular connector on the adapter board and then pushed down carefully until you can hear a clicking noise. All that is left to do for a first test is to connect the HDMI driver board via an HDMI cable with the Raspberry Pi and also to provide some power via the micro USB port. So let's power up our Raspberry Pi and check if our HDMI display works in the original unmodified condition.
Well, we already seen the boot up sequence on the command line on the display, so obviously Linux is capable of displaying something. So let's see if our nano DLP installation is also capable to address the newly installed display. Let's go into settings, projector, and let's select some of the calibration patterns. Well, our initial test was successful and provided the proof that the unmodified original condition of the display as it was provided by the supplier, by the manufacturer, was totally okay. So there are no warranty claims and we can proceed with the modification and if the test afterwards shows some issues, we are aware that it's our own fault and this was not uh, original by the manufacturer. Well, the modifications that we need to make will only affect the LCD display itself and not the driver board or the adapter board. Therefore, we disconnect them first. So, this is the point of no return. We start to separate the backlight from the rest of the LCD display and as already explained, this process is irreversible, so this is the very last chance for you to stop right here if you're not sure if you want to do this. Well, for that step you can use either a Philips screwdriver or a similar sharp edge tool. I decided to go with the thumbnail of my thumb. Just go to one of the four edges of the HDMI display and carefully try to feel with the thumbnail the transition the spot where the aluminium frame of the backlight ends and the glass of the LCD starts. Once you have a grip with your thumbnail on the edge of the aluminium, carefully bend it back away from the glass until you feel or hear a snap where the backlight separates from the LCD glass. That foil in the middle carries the LEDs of the backlight and also need to be removed, but is still attached to the flat ribbon cable that provides the power to those LEDs. Therefore we just need to cut those wires with some wire cutter. In this close-up you find indicated the spot where the flat ribbon cable provides the power to the backlight LEDs and where we need to perform this tiny little cut. Within the next step we apply the protective glass on top of the LCD. For this step it's most important to have a lint-free and dust-free environment. It is recommended to use some microfiber cloth to clean up the relevant areas, especially on the display and also on the working surface. Both the protective glass and the top side of the LCD are covered by some protective foil that need to be peeled off before they are applied to each other.
that side of the protective glass where we just peeled off the foil is covered by some special adhesive that allows us to safely attach and later on detach the LCD display. Besides of that, that adhesive has also very good optical properties, so it is basically invisible and does not affect the quality of the LCD. Take yourself some time to properly align the edge of the LCD display with the inner border of the black frame of the protective glass. What we can see here are air bubbles and they would have a negative impact on the displayed images and therefore on the print quality and need to be eliminated. There are two types of them. The first, less critical, consists of air alone. They can be squeezed out carefully. The other type of air bubbles is caused by inclusions of dust, dirt and lint. This second type is nasty for two reasons. The first reason is we can hardly recognize them as such. Only after some time when we try to squeeze them out without success and they still exist, they are most likely the second type. The other reason why they are nasty is because there is only one way to get rid of them. The assembly of protective glass and LCD need to get detached, cleaned up and reattached again. And another good property of the adhesive on the protective glass is that it get not transferred to the LCD. There are no remains of that glue, which makes it possible to easily clean it up with some microfiber cloth. When it comes to cleanup of the adhesive side of the protective glass, this is a totally different story. Because classical cleaning methods like some kind of cloth, even microfiber cloth or cleaning liquids would make the situation even more worse, because the adhesive layers acts like a magnet for dust and dirt and also cleaning liquids will destroy the adhesive layer while dust and dirt still remains in the adhesive. Though the solution that I came up with after a couple of failed attempts is to use some blue painter's tape, put it on top of the adhesive side of the protective glass and gently rub it onto the surface. Obviously the adhesive of the blue painter's tape is slightly stronger than the adhesive of the protective glass and therefore once we pull off again the blue painter's tape all dust and dirt will be pulled off with it. And luckily this cleaning method also keeps the adhesive layer of the protective glass intact. So we can start off with the second attempt just as it would be the first one. Ready to go for a second attempt.
Well, at that point, I'm pretty sure you can imagine how relaxing this exercise is. And therapy could not be that effective. I literally can do this for hours. In fact, I did it for hours. Then it took me four attempts until I get one bubble free assembly. Well, just kidding. At least about the relaxing part. Not so much about the four attempts. Done. No more air bubbles. So let's do one more cleanup and prepare for a final test. Let's connect again the LCD display to the driver board. The driver board via the HDMI cable to the Raspberry Pi and provide some power over the micro USB port. Yes, success! Despite the whole torture, our LCD panel still displays the selected calibration pattern. Well, that's all for today. I hope you found information about the preparation of an HDMI display for use in an SLA printer helpful. And would be glad to see you again, maybe next time, with another episode about the FDM printed SLA printer.